Hey everybody, Mr. McLennan here. Today we're going to talk about chapter 8.2, which is the volume of a cone. If you guys remember from last week, we talked about the volume of a cylinder. So it's actually a cone and a cylinder are very similar when it comes to calculating their volumes, but there is a slight difference to them. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So when we're looking at the volume of a cone, you'll notice that it's, again, it's got the circular base for the item, which I'm going to go ahead and circle right here. So we have a circular base here. And then, of course, we have a height of the cone here. And it turns out that it's got the same dimensions of the base and the height with this cylinder. But the volume is going to be different because, well, it's missing pieces. So... I could draw in like if there was a cylinder right there. So all of this stuff is missing from the cone, which would normally be on there for the cylinder. And it turns out that that missing part is in fact two thirds of the volume of the cylinder. So that means that the volume of the cylinder would be one third of the volume of the cylindrical shape that we had before. So the so for our equation, we're going to have the equation we had before. So we had base times height times one third. And if we recall what we used for the base, so B would be pi times R squared. Because remember, that's the area in order to find a circle. So we're going to use this equation if for example we're provided the radius and we're not given the base so we're going to be able to go through and solve for these types of problems all right so here we go our first problem they want us to find the volume of the cone and they want us to round our answer to the nearest tenth so let's keep that in mind well if I'm looking at it, the diameter is four meters. So if we take a look down here, this four meters is talking about the full length across, not just the radius. So in order to get the radius, which is two, we had to take our diameter, which is four millimeters, and divide it by two to get us two so now that we have that for our radius, we're going to be able to plug that in within our base. But if we recall, our base is equal to pi r squared. So we're going to substitute pi r squared in for b right here. So r, of course, is 2. So if we substitute 2 into our equation right here. And now we can go through and solve it through the steps. So I got exponent, so I got to do the exponent first. So 2 squared is going to be 4. And then we multiply 4 times 6. So 4 times 6 is 24. And then we have to multiply 24 times 1 third. And that is 24 thirds, which is equal to and that's what we have right there. We end up with 8 times pi. And if we multiply the pi out, then we would get approximately 25.1 as our answer. But of course, it's not 25.1, but 25.1 cubic meters. Because remember, our measurements were in meters over here. So if I go over here, this should be meters cubed or cubic meter. So make sure you put the units at the end of your answer. All right. And of course, as we've talked about before, the base is equal to pi r squared. So we're going to make sure we have pi r squared in for what b actually is. Let me clear this. All right, now it's your guys' turn. I want you to go through and see if you can calculate what the volume of this cone would be if you provided that the radius is equal to 6. And let me go back. The height 
is equal to 15. So take a second and see if you can calculate that out. All right, so hopefully you had an opportunity to do that. Let's go through the solution process. We know the height of the cone is 15 centimeters, and we know that the radius is 6 centimeters. Therefore, we can use the equation of a volume of a cone. And I should have written that down before. So the volume of a cone is one-third base times height. Basically, the cap will be there. And, of course, the same thing as one-third times the base, which is going to be pi r squared times the height. And so there's our equation right there as I wrote it up there. So now we're going to be able to substitute each of those values in there. So 6, let me grab a different color here, we'll substitute in for r, and the 15 we'll substitute in here for h. So we'll substitute those in there. Now we go through and solve this. So I, first off, I'm going to do 6 squared. That's going to give me 36. And now I can go through and multiply 36 times 15 and divide that by 3. That gives us 180 pi. And if we multiply that out, we get 565.5 centimeters cubed. So remember, we are using centimeters, so we got to make sure we use centimeter cubed as our unit. And something I should have mentioned before is that they did want the answer to the nearest tenths. So make sure that you had your answer to the nearest tenths as well. All right, so now let's look at a different problem here. Now we're looking at the height of this cone, but notice that the orientation is a little different. Notice that it's off on its side here. We are provided the radius. So this is our radius right here. And we're also provided the volume. We know the volume, but we don't know the height. So we need to set up an equation that is going to solve for the height. But we can use our original equation. Volume is equal to one-third times the base times the height. We can substitute b in there for pi r squared, and we can start substituting values. So 9 right here. We'll grab a different color for that. So let me grab, cancel that. I don't know why that popped up. So the radius 9, we'll substitute in right here. And the volume which was 956, we substitute in right over here for V. Now, now we're trying to solve for H. So I need to get what's on the left-hand side, so all of this, on the opposite side. So I need to divide that all over. So... We could, though, simplify it down first. So I can do 9 squared, which is 81. Divide, multiply that by a third. That gives me 27. 27 pi times h. We then can divide 27 pi to the other side. So if we divide by 27 pi, divide by 27 pi, then we would get that h is equal to 11.3. And though it's not written down, 11.3, the units would be here, since we're in feet and feet cubed, the units right here should be feet. Those are the units that we are using for this problem. So the height is 11.3 feet. Oops, I went one too far. There we go. Now I want you guys to go through and solve for this problem here. So again, you know that the height of the cone is 15. Or not the height, I'm sorry. Uh, that's a little miswording there. It's not the height that you know. You know the radius. The radius of the cone is 15 yards. And you know that the volume is 7,200 yards cubed. 
So what you're trying to determine is, in fact, the height here. So I'll go ahead, make sure I write down the equation again. So volume is equal to one third times the base, which the base is pi r squared times the height. So if I'm going to solve for the height, I could rewrite this equation. So it looks like 3 times v over pi r squared is equal to the height. So use this equation to solve for what the height will actually be over here. So take a minute, see if you can do that. All right, you should have had an opportunity to try to work on this. Let's go ahead and solve this together. Well, I'm going to use the same equation that we wrote down just up there. So the height is equal to 3 times the volume. The volume is 7,200. divided by pi r squared. So pi times the radius, the radius is up here, is 15 yards. So 15, and that is squared there. So now we go through and start simplifying this down. Well, three times 7,200, see if I do that in my head, that should be 21,600 if I'm correct. And that should be divided by pi times 15 squared. So 15 squared is 225. All right. Now this part I'll have to use a calculator for. So I call a calculator. Let's go ahead and calculate this out. So 21,600 divided by 225. Oops. 6,200. 21,600 divided by 225. And we get 11.5 repeating, it looks like. So I'll put a little line on top there. Divided by pi still. So I'm going to divide my answer by pi. And I get approximately. 3 point, does it want, it does, it wants us to round it to the nearest tenths, so I got 3.678, but to round it to the nearest tenths, that should be 3.7. That is what H is equal to. And of course our units for it, I'll squeeze the units in over here, we're in yards, so our units should be yards. All right, here we go. Real life application problem that we're gonna to use to with the volume of this hourglass here. So if we look at this hourglass, it does have the shape of a cone right here. So this does have a cone shape. So you must answer a trivia question before the sand in the timer falls into the bottom. The sand falls at a rate of 500, or not 550, cubic millimeters per second. How much time do you have to answer the question? So first thing we really need to do is figure out well, what is the volume of this shape and then using the how much of a volume the hourglasses loses per second, that's going to tell us how long it actually takes. So let's figure out what that volume actually is. So we're going to use the formula to, for the volume of a cone. So volume is equal to one-third times the base times the height. We're going to go ahead and substitute in for our base. Remember, base is the same thing as pi r squared. So if we're going to substitute in. So pi times the radius. The radius is 10 squared times the height, 24 millimeters is the height here. So we substitute each of those values in, we simplify this down, 
So 10 squared is equal to 100 times 24 should be 2,400 multiplied by one third. So 2,400 divided by three should be 800 pi. If you multiply pi through, you get 2,513. And of course, this is the volume. So this should be millimeters cubed. That is the volume there. Now we know that there, that is the volume there, and we are provided that the hourglass has the volume flow rate of 50 millimeters per second that come out of it. So 50 millimeters cubed per second. So we can come up with an equation to solve for that. We take our 2,513, we multiply it by 1 over 50, so 50 millimeters per second. So the millimeters cancel out here, as you can see. So you're left with seconds at the end. So 2,513 divided by 50 gives you approximately a time of 50.26 seconds that you need in order to answer the trivia question. Okay, so now what we're going to do here, um, number three is asking you, the sand falls at a rate of 60 cubic millimeters per second. How much time do you need to answer that? And just a reminder that the volume that we calculated was 2,513 millimeters cubed. So I'm going to give you a second, see if you can solve for how long you'll actually have if you have a volume flow rate of 60 cubic millimeters. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about that. Well, the time is going to be equal to the volume divided by the rate at which the volume is flowing through the hourglass. So we know the volume is 2,513, and we know that the rate is 60 millimeters cubed per second. So again, our units of millimeters cubed cancel out. And this is really one over one over S. And the units is means it's actually going to be equal to S. So remember S is seconds there. So we do end up with seconds as our units. And if we do to 2513 divided by 60, we do end up with 41.9 seconds that we have now for the answering the trivia question. And if you think about it, that actually makes sense because if you only have, if it, the volume flow rate was only 50 before, so it's a slower flow rate than if we had a 60 millimeters, that means that we had 50 seconds. And now if we increased it to 60, then we end up with only 41.9. So as we increase the flow rate, that means it's going to take less time for that sand to actually go through the hourglass. So going through the top region here down to the bottom region here. All right. Number four is saying that if we change the height of the sand to be 12 millimeters and the radius to be 5 millimeters, how much time do you have to answer the question? So this is going to make it so you're still using the same flow rate here of 60 cubic millimeters. So i like you to try to go through and determine how much time are we going to have if our volume is going to be different. So remember, our volume now is going to be equal to one-third times the times pi, times the radius, the radius you're told is 5, so that's going to be squared, times the height of 12. So you're going to need to calculate that volume out and then do the same calculation as we did for number 3 to figure out how much time you actually have. So take a second, see if you can do that. All right, let's go through the calculations here to determine what that volume actually was. So you need to solve for the new volume. So you need to first calculate that, which we had right up there. 
Um, the following is one third times pi times r squared times the height, which is h. We substitute the radius in there for each one of them. So we have radius of five and we have a height of 12, which we substitute it in. If we calculate that through, simplify it down, we get that the volume is approximately 314 millimeters cubed. So if we had a volume flow rate of 60, that means we're gonna divide our volume of 314 by 60, and we get approximately 5.23 seconds in order to answer the trivia question with this flow rate. So not a lot of time to answer this flow rate with a lot less than, which makes sense because if you look at the sand there, 314 to 2,513, you're looking at at least eight times more sand with the original than with the new amount. So the time between five and 40 seconds, which is also about eight times as much. So that actually makes a lot of sense why it is that much less. So the, the rate at which they're different is about a multiple of eight. Okay, so hopefully you're able to get through these. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll gladly help you guys out. I, I hope you have a good rest of your day.